This miniature has been mostly dry brushed and it took an hour or two to finish. So dry brushing can get you nice results fast, but there are a few things that people do that you should definitely avoid. So what are they? The first one is pretty obvious and that happens when you assemble the model. Sometimes people forget to clean the mold lines and fill the gaps. And sure, you might say, but Zumikito, that is true for any painting method. Okay, technically yes, but when dry brushing, it's even worse. See, when you dry brush anything, you essentially pick out exposed features. Mold lines are exactly that, so if you don't remove them, they'll be very visible. Unfortunately, this happened to my Necron army and it's visible on some of the models. It's not too bad, but once you see it, you can't unsee it. So do remove the mold lines and do fill the gaps. That's because gaps usually form two separate edges. However, if you are a lazy schmuck like I am, you can just leave them darker and hope for the best. Or you know, you can just f***ing do it, it takes a few seconds. If you are wondering how to fill those gaps, we'll get to that later. But until then, I have a shocking revelation. Did you know that dry brushing shouldn't be dry? <gasps> Let me explain. Now we all know that you should use some water for base coating. However, even other layers require some water. But before you start, you gotta get rid of most paint and moisture in the bristles. To keep your brush damp, you can use something like this dampening pad, or anything similar will do the trick. Keeping it damp prevents building texture on your miniature for smoother finish. So if you start seeing that the mini is a bit dusty and there is some texture, Dampen the brush a little bit. But I can't stress this enough, you have to make sure to remove a lot of paint from the bristles, otherwise you'll cover too much. And the less of the surface you want to cover, the more paint you have to remove. This is one way of controlling how much paint you release, the other one is pressure. Actually, once you remove sufficient amount of paint and moisture, how much pressure you apply and the direction of the brush strokes matter the most. For example, if you want to pick out just the most exposed edges of your miniature, the proper way to go about it is to use top-down brush strokes. This might seem obvious to you, but when I started Warhammer, all I did is use a circular motion over the entire miniature, which looked terrible. However, it always depends on what you want to paint. So something like these scales only require top edges to be picked out, but using circular motion on a base, for example, is totally fine. Either way, as you proceed to lighter paints, you want to apply less and less pressure. On these scales, moving from dark color to lighter ones was quite simple. But when you go for highlight colors like bone white, ivory, etc., it'll be desaturated and muted. So to counter this, you have to introduce more layers and more colors. In general, miniature painting is not a linear process, even though some people make it look like that. So when I felt like the tentacles of this tyrannid lack any real color, I went back to introduce some on top. Don't be afraid to use multiple colors and multiple steps. It's absolutely fine to use like three to five different layers because that way you'll get much smoother and interesting result. Since dry brushing overall is really fast anyway, it won't take you much longer to take an extra step or two. And even though dry brushing will get you far, I'll be the first one to tell you. Don't use just dry brushing. Just like any other technique, dry brushing works the best when applied with other ones. For example, you wouldn't use just washes to paint your minis. Or you could, but it would look, you know, dog shit. So if you want to paint fast, you can paint like 60 to 90% of everything and then refine the last few bits. In miniature painting, it's always the case that you start kind of broad, maybe even messy and refine as you move further. Dry brushing typically won't help you with the refinement of the little tiny details, but I bet my ass cheeks it'll help you with the rest. So if I feel like I need some more separation of elements, I can selectively apply a wash or black line it. In the same manner, if the edges need some touch-ups, I can go back and do it the regular way. And hell, you don't even have to highlight all the edges, <coughs> even though you definitely should, but maybe just pick out the ones which matter the most. And in the same way, you can apply some washes or fluo paints on top to add some interesting coloration or light effects. It won't take that much longer and it'll look fantastic. By the way, the unedited footage for this mini as well as the Necron army is on my Patreon. It's worthwhile mentioning that dry brushing is mostly optimized for speed, but if you stick to these 5 points, you'll still get very nice results fast. 
Oh, and about those gaps, see, I made a video about painting tips that'll improve your miniatures, and in one of them, I mentioned the best ways to fill the gaps. So if you wanna know and you wanna improve your minis, definitely check it out. And see you there.